Nick Dwyer here for the 7th inning with another episode of this day in sports history. In yesterday's episode, we saw the first edition of the Rose Bowl as well as, well, just a ton of other bowl games. We do have some bowl games to talk about today, not nearly as many. But we also have some boxing to talk about as well as some tennis. So if y'all enjoy this video, leave a like on it. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Let's get to it. This day in sports history. We will start out today in baseball in 1912, and Brooklyn Superboss baseball president Charles Ebbets would announce his purchase of four and a half acres to build a new concrete and steel stadium, Ebbets Field, which would open up in 1913. Moved to 1922 in our first bowl game of the day, the eighth edition of the Rose Bowl, California would end up tying Washington and Jefferson 0-0. Zero to zero. Moved to college basketball now 21 years later in 1943. And the University of Kentucky Wildcats men's basketball team would begin a 129-game home winning streak. That would end in 1955, and on the way, it would incorporate three NCAA titles in 1948, 1949, and 1951. Back to the bowl games in 1950, we have two top 10 teams meeting each other. Number 6 Ohio State would defeat number 3 California by a score of 17-14. to Stay with that score, stay at the Rose Bowl different year 1956 the 42nd Rose Bowl number two Michigan State would defeat number four UCLA 17 to 14. Stay in 1956 moves to the Orange Bowl this time number one Oklahoma would defeat number three Maryland by a score of 20 to 6. Take a break off of bowl games go to boxing in 1957 and in the first of four meetings between these two fighters Gene Fulmer would win the world middleweight boxing title after a 15-round unanimous decision over Sugar Ray Robinson. Back to the Bulls in 1961, we have the Rose Bowl and the Orange Bowl. Start with the Rose, number 6 Washington would defeat number 1 Minnesota, 17-7. Then at the Orange Bowl, number 5 Missouri would defeat number 4 Navy, 21-14. to Moved to 1966 and we have the NFL Championship from the 1965 season. The Green Bay Packers would defeat the Cleveland Browns, 23 to 12. This would be the last NFL championship played before Super Bowl era. Moved to 1972, now remain in the NFL, and during the 1971 season, we would have the AFC and the NFC championships. In the AFC, the Miami Dolphins would defeat the Baltimore Colts by a score of 21 to nothing. Then in the NFC, the Dallas Cowboys would defeat the San Francisco 49ers 14 to 3. Stay in 1972, but at the 1971 Australian Open, Virginia Wade would win her first Grand Slam title, defeating Yvonne Goulardon 6-4, 6-4 in straight sets. Stay at the Australian Open on the women's side in 1979 at the 78 Open. Christine O'Neill would win her first and only Grand Slam singles event, defeating Betsy Nagelson 6-3, 7-6 in straight sets. One year later in 1980 at the 1979 Australian Open, on the men's side, Guillermo Vias would retain his title for his fourth and final Grand Slam, defeating John Sadry 7-6, 6-3, Two years later, go to 1982 in the NFL, part of the 1981 season, and we would have an epic in Miami in at least 75 degree weather. The San Diego Chargers would defeat the Miami Dolphins 41-38 in the AFC Divisional game. Back to tennis, though, in 1982, part of the 1981 Australian Open on the women's side, Martina Navratilova would win her first of three Australian signal titles, defeating Chris Everett Lloyd, 6-7, 6-4, 7-5, and this would be her third of 18 majors. We get back into bowl season now in 1984. We have the Rose Bowl, where UCLA would upset number four Illinois and just pound them 45-9. Then in the 50th edition of the Sugar Bowl in 1984, number 3 Auburn would defeat number 8 Michigan 9-7. Stay in 84, have the 50th edition of the Orange Bowl this time, number 2 Penn State would defeat number 1 Miami 14-10. Three years later, go to 1987 and we have the Fiesta Bowl, number 2 Penn State would defeat number 1 Miami 14-10. Remain in 1987, go to the NBA, and the Indiana Pacers would defeat the Los Angeles Clippers 116-106, giving coach Jack Ramsey his 800th victory, making him at the time one of only two coaches to reach that milestone, the other being Red Auerbach. 
Back to the bowl games in 1989, start with the 75th edition of the Rose Bowl. Number 11, Michigan would defeat number 5, USC, 22-14. to Then at the Sugar Bowl in 89, number 4, Florida State would defeat number 7, Auburn, 13-7. to Finally, at the Fiesta Bowl in 89, at the National Championship game, number 1, Notre Dame would defeat number 3, West Virginia, 34-21. Move all the way up to 2006 now at the Sugar Bowl. Number 11, West Virginia, would defeat number 7, Georgia, 38 35. Six years later, go to 2012 at the Rose Bowl. Number 6, Oregon, would defeat number 9, Wisconsin, 45 38. Remain in 2012 at the Fiesta Bowl. Number 3, Oklahoma State, would defeat number 4, Stanford, in overtime, 41 38. Move over to some darts in 2012 and Adrian Lewis would retain his PDC World Darts Championship with a 7-3 victory over Andy Hamilton. Back to the bowl games in 2013 at the Sugar Bowl, number 21 Louisville would defeat number 3 Florida 33-23. One year later at the Sugar Bowl in 2014, number 11 Oklahoma would defeat number 3 Alabama 45-31. Back to darts now in 2017, and Michael Van Derwin would win his second PDC World Darts Championship, defeating Gary Anderson, the defending champion, 7-3. And we will end today's video off in 2019 in the international world of football, and Christian Pulisic would become the most expensive American transfer when he would move from Borussia Dortmund to Chelsea for £58 million. So there you have it. That's what happened on this day in sports history. If I left anything out, I do apologize. If I mispronounce any names, I also apologize. But I'll see everybody tomorrow for Nick O'Dwyer and the 10th inning.